Hi, it's Katrina. From ancient Roman coins found by accident to an entire lost city, here are 10 exciting recent archaeological discoveries. Number 10. Roman Coin Hoard Last year, a Polish man named Marius Dill discovered some scattered coins while looking for antlers in a 328-foot section of an abandoned field in Sichobors, a village in the Lublin region of southeastern Poland. That's a fun find! He notified archaeologists at the museum who unearthed 1,753 coins total and took them to the museum to analyze them. They turned out to be Roman in origin and were manufactured over a 100-year period between the end of the 1st and the end of the 2nd centuries. Their age was determined based on the images the coins bear, with the oldest pieces featuring the Emperor Nerva and the newest ones bearing the image of Septimius Severus. Altogether, the hoard equals roughly six years' pay for a Roman legionary, according to museum director Bartolomeus Bartecki, who believes they were originally placed in a wooden box or a leather pouch decorated with silver-plated bronze rivets, although the container did not survive the test of time. It wasn't enough to buy a small village, but it was not a small amount, especially for barbarian tribes, he explained. During the second century, the Vandals inhabited what is now Lublin, but they were soon driven out by the Goths, who began traveling from Scandinavia to southeastern Europe during the early 3rd century. Perhaps the Vandals hoped that they would return to their lands in the near future, so they decided to bury the coins. But they were wrong. The museum plans to put the coins on public display. Number 9. Paintings on Mummy's Coffin Conservatories at the Perth Museum and Art Gallery in Scotland recently made an unexpected discovery while examining the mummified remains of an ancient Egyptian woman named ta ker -Hub. Probably not how she would have pronounced it, but I'm sure she'll forgive me. The 3,000-year-old mummy had laid undisturbed inside her coffin. When she was removed from her resting place, researchers were careful to leave her inside her coffin. Over 100 years later, researchers took her out to preserve her and noticed that she had been laying on top of incredible painted figures. The two paintings lined the internal and external bases of the bottom part of the coffin. The more intact of the two images is called She of the West and represents the Egyptian goddess Amentet, or Imentet, who is depicted wearing a red dress and with ribbons draped around her arms and her head facing to the right. Researchers believe the painting is based on a statue because the goddess is shown on a platform and supporting pole. Mark Hall, the collections officer at Perth Museum and Art Gallery, explained to Alan Young from The Scotsman that staff had never had a reason to lift the mummy out of her casket before, and so were completely surprised to find these bonus paintings. Score! Ta Ker Hub was possibly a priestess or princess from Thebes, according to a 2013 study carried out by researchers at the University of Manchester. She died sometime between 747 and 656 BC, during Egypt's 25th dynasty. The priestess was discovered in the late 1800s and her tomb had already been looted by grave robbers, but she has been safely kept at the Perth Museum since 1936. Number 8. Oldest Human DNA The fossilized tooth of a mysterious human ancestor has finally been identified over 25 years after its discovery. In 1994, archaeologists unearthed the fossilized remains of members of this archaic group while digging in northern Spain's Atapuerca Mountains. The largest bone fragments, which appear to have been cannibalized, belong to six individuals and date back some 800,000 years. They share some characteristics with modern humans and several of our ancestors but were distinct enough to warrant their own classification. Researchers labeled the unknown group Homo antecessor and theorized that they may represent the common ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans. They learned differently when they analyzed H. antecessor's tooth enamel proteins, a process that enabled them to study the genetic material. Although these proteins contain less information than DNA, meaning they vary less between species, studying them, a method called paleoproteomics, is a groundbreaking way to learn more about humans and animals whose remains are so old their DNA has irretrievably broken down. The team believes that H. antecessor was likely a sister species of the ancestor we share with Neanderthals and Denisovans. These results are far from conclusive, but they may bring us one step closer to sorting out our very confusing human family tree. Number 7. 5,000-Year-Old Sword Archaeologist Vittoria Dallarmelina was still a PhD student when she discovered a 5,000-year-old misidentified sword during a 2017 leisure trip to the St. Lazarus Monastery in the Venetian Lagoon. 
The monastery has been home to the Mecca Tartist Congregation of Armenian Catholic Monks since 1717. A 43-centimeter metal sword caught Vittoria's eye near the end of her guided tour. It was labeled as a medieval object, but based on her specialized knowledge of Bronze Age weaponry, she knew it was likely much older. For the next two years, further research was carried out on the sword, including chemical composition analyses, which revealed that the weapon is made of an alloy of arsenic and copper, or arsenical bronze. This material was common between the 4th and 3rd millenniums BC, a long time ago, and resembles other weapons from an archaeological site in eastern Anatolia called the Royal Palace of Arslantepe in both chemical makeup and shape. An Armenian art collector sent the sword with a collection of other gifts to a monk in 1886. A note that came with the sword claimed that it was discovered at Kavak, a settlement along the Black Sea in what is now eastern Turkey, but it got mixed into a collection of medieval artifacts following Alishan's death. It's one of the oldest known swords ever discovered, and perhaps the oldest known example of its type. Number 6. Lead Spiked Beer while excavating a series of Georgian and Victorian-era cellars in Leeds, England, archaeologists unearthed a stash of 600 bottles of beer. Located under the building stairs at the former Scarborough Castle Inn, it looked like ginger beer. Most of the bottles bore labels saying J.E. Richardson of Leeds, while the others came from a variety of 1880s breweries. The team tested the liquid in some of the bottles, instead of just popping them open and having a few, which was definitely a good thing since they contained a mix of alcohol and toxic lead. At about 3% alcohol by volume, the drinks were the same strength as a mild English session ale, Elliot Routh reported for Vine Pear. The liquid also contained 0.13 mg per liter of lead, far above the Environmental Protection Agency's recommended safe maximum of 0.015 mg per liter. This unusually high lead concentration could have irreversibly damaged drinkers' internal organs and likely would have made them feel weak and sick, according to Smithsonian Magazine. Researchers are unsure how the toxic metal made its way into the beer, but they suspect it came from lead pipes feeding into the breweries that were used to make it. Discoveries like this remind us that while some archaeological discoveries turn our understanding of the past completely on its head, others offer us an equally fascinating glimpse into the day-to-day -day lives of past generations. And finding alcohol for an archaeologist is always fun. Number 5. Medieval Shrine While making repairs on a railway embankment following a landslide near the town of Guildford in southern England, a team of workers discovered a cave containing a medieval shrine or hermitage of some sort. The shallow sandstone cave contains artwork that experts believe dates back to the 14th century. Archaeologists who analyzed the engravings and carvings have possibly connected the structure to the ruins of the medieval church of St. Catherine. These are located on a nearby hill, but they also think it may have been used for cult activity predating the church's existence. The cave contained what appear to be shrines or decorative niches, together with carved initials and other markings, said a spokesperson for Archaeology Southeast. These niches, or sections, range in height from 1 to 2.3 feet. There are black marks on the cave ceiling, thought to be soot from lamps. Further analyses, including radiocarbon dating, are being carried out on the markings and other features of the cave, including two suspected fire pits, to hopefully help determine how far back the cave dates, who used it, and why. Archaeologists note that the cave may have been larger before the railway was constructed into the hill during the 1840s. Number 4. Lost Maya Capital An odd encounter in 2014 has led to the recent discovery of a long-lost Maya capital in Chiapas in southeastern Mexico. That year, a roadside food vendor flagged down archaeology student Whitaker Schroeder and explained that his friend, a cattle rancher, had found an ancient tablet on his property. They knew that the archaeologists had been doing research in the town. Whitaker and another graduate student went to the rancher's house and verified the tablet's authenticity. Suspecting there may be more things to find, an international team from Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. came together in 2018 and began excavations at the property. The site, named La Caja Celtal, proved to be the capital of an ancient Maya kingdom called Sac Si. It was settled in 750 BC and occupied for 1,000 years after. It's smaller than other important Maya cities like Chichen Itza and Palenque, but is impressive in its own right, and once boasted numerous buildings that once housed the local elite, religious sites, a ball court, ceremonial center, dozens of sculptures, and a 45-foot pyramid. One of the monuments the team found is covered with inscriptions about rituals, battles, a rain god, and a mythical water serpent. 
The team plans to return to the site and continue their excavations, as well as LIDAR surveys, which will help give them an idea of what may be hidden beneath the area's thick vegetation. Speaking of recent discoveries in Mexico, there has been a lot of debate recently about artifacts discovered here in 2019 too, specifically statues and sculptures of figures that remind many people of aliens. Are these artifacts real, or is someone making them and trying to pass them off as authentic? Reportedly, these artifacts date back to the time of the Maya and were found in caves between Veracruz and Puebla. They represent humanoid figures, but with large heads and eyes and three fingers on their hands. Academics are very skeptical about these finds, and information is very scarce. If you have any more insight, let me know in the comments below. Number 3. Neanderthal String us humans have long thought of our Neanderthal cousins as not very bright, more primitive versions of ourselves. One of the many characteristics we've cited as a distinction between us and them is early humans' ability to make and use tools, something we didn't think until recently that Neanderthals were capable of. But we were wrong, and as we discover more and more evidence of Neanderthals being more advanced than we thought, it's becoming clearer that they deserve much more credit than we've given them. In fact, researchers are starting to believe that our extinct relatives weren't much different from us. Archaeologists recently discovered the world's oldest known cord fragments at Abri du Maras, an excavation site in southeastern France, where Neanderthals lived between 90,000 and 42,000 years ago. This string dates back roughly 50,000 years, making it much older than the world's previous oldest known cord fragments, which are 19,000 years old from Israel. The artifact, a micro-residue of fibers, was found among remnants of many other Neanderthal tools. The idea that Neanderthals were cognitively inferior to modern humans is becoming increasingly untenable, the researchers wrote in their study, which appeared in the journal Scientific Reports. The string was likely made from the fibers of the inner layer of some type of conifer bark. To you, it might just be string, but thousands of years ago, string was huge. Think of all the things that you can make and sew, tools for hunting, fishing, making bags to carry things, fabric to wear, all kinds of stuff. Besides indicating that Neanderthals use tools, the cord fragment points to them having a mathematical understanding of numbers and a similar cognitive complexity to humans. Number two, early domesticated crops. Until recently, experts knew of four places in the world where the world's first domesticated crops emerged – China, the Middle East, Mesoamerica, and the Andes. Now, an international team of researchers has added a fifth domestication area in southwestern Amazonia to that list. Over 10,000 years ago during the early Holocene, manioc, squash, and other edibles became domesticated in Llanos de Moxos, a 48,700-square-mile savanna in the Beni Department of Bolivia. Raised fields, mounds, canals, forest islands, and certain other earthen features are telltale signs that humans influence the landscape. Using remote sensing, the team mapped large areas of forest islands and discovered that some are of man-made origin, while others are not. Within these islands, they found evidence of yucca, cassava, squash, and maize dating back between 10,000 and 6,500 years ago. While scientists have long theorized that early crop domestication likely occurred in southwestern Amazonia, this is the first documented evidence of it. These findings suggest that the early Holocene inhabitants in the region had a more varied society than we thought. Number 1. London's True Age Archaeologists recently announced a discovery that may put the age of London at 3,000 years, or three times older than previously thought. Just 50 feet outside the historic city's northern border, they unearthed evidence of a prehistoric ceremonial site. There were 436 fragments of Neolithic pottery. Scientific analysis at the University of Bristol revealed that certain pots were used for processing milk, most likely for dairy products like cheese or butter, while others were used for making a meat stew. Yum! Further investigation indicated that the 436 fragments were part of a garbage dump that contained thousands of shards at one time. Ritual feasting and pottery depositing often occur at sites like this, which have been discovered elsewhere in Britain. The finding, which is unlike anything ever found in the immediate area, suggests that London did not start out as a town or a village, but perhaps as a place where people gathered for social and religious reasons like rituals and feasts. Before now, London's beginning was marked by its establishment as a town during the first century, a time of Roman conquest. Based on the new discovery, however, that date could possibly be pushed back a few thousand years. It's unclear what, if any, human activity occurred in the centuries between then and the first century, but researchers are uncovering more and more signs that there was. 
Thanks for watching. Which discovery was your favorite? Mine was the string. Were you surprised by any of these? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!